Hello everyone and welcome to the start of a brand new series in my Unreal Engine 4 tutorials. This series is all about creating a shopkeeper NPC in an Unreal Engine 4. This shopkeeper will be an NPC that we can walk up to, interact with and buy items from them using in-game currency. In this episode, in this episode sorry, we're going to uh, work on creating the NPC and the uh, various components they're going to have uh, according to them. So first thing we'll do is add this new blueprint class and I'm going to choose a character as the option and I'm going to call this shopkeeper NPC and this shopkeeper NPC I'm going to use a mesh that I've really downloaded from the marketplace when it was free and that is my skeletal mesh uh, skeleton mesh for a mage so this was free one month uh, I'm just going to use this one and put them into position like so. Now I'm going to use the animation that came with him as well. So let's create an animation blueprint for him. Go add new animation blueprint. And I'm going to choose the skeleton mage skeleton. And here I have a uh, shopkeep per underscore anim. And in here, I'm simply just going to put the idol that he has, like so. Okay. To assign a animation blueprint to your mesh, you should choose the mesh option in your component list, and on the right hand side, you'll see uh, the animation section. You'll see animation mode is going to use an animation blueprint, and I'm going to choose an animation blueprint from the list, and I want uh, this one. And there we go. So that's the most basic setup. We've got an NPC in a world. So I can drag him into the world and place him into position like so. Behind this little makeshift shop I've made. Okay. So other parts that belong to this uh, character is I'm gonna make a trigger volume for him. So as soon as I walk into his shop, it's gonna trigger the shopkeep UI and change to a different camera position as well. So to do that, I need to set up a couple of components on this as well. I'm gonna add a box collision, and that would be called the uh, shop trigger. And I'm also gonna add a camera, normal camera, and it's gonna be called a shop camera. Um, making sure that they're not children of each other that they're all separate entities, not parented at all. So the shop camera, I can immediately turn around like so, as de by default. Now I don't do anything else with the shop trigger or shop camera because the way it works is when you place one of these into the world, you can see the camera and you can see the box on it. And on the details panel, I expand this open. You can choose the shop trigger here and you can move that single component independently from everything else. So rather than have to try and line it up inside the specific actor's viewport, you can just do it here. So I'm just going to create a trigger volume for the shopkeeper. And with the camera, I'm going to position the camera using a little preview window. To position that I'm happy with as well, like so. Excellent, that'll do. So, our shopkeeper is going to switch this camera when we enter this trigger volume. So, in your shopkeeper NPC, we're going to clear those, we don't need those, uh, but I'm going to select my shop trigger volume and right click into my graph. This will give me the context for using that shop trigger volume. And I'll do when I do a begin overlap. And I want the add on component to begin overlap. So this will trigger as soon as anything enters that shopkeeper uh, shop trigger. Um, first thing you do is check whether or not it is actually the player that has walked through it. So, other actor, um, we can simply do it equals equals to. And we want to choose the get player character object. From that boolean uh, from uh, the game 
and that gives us a boolean which we can put into a branch. Like so. So this is going to check whether or not the character actor is the one that's walked through the overlap. If it has, then we are going to test that out with just a print string to make sure that it's working. First of all, testing out the game for walking to the trigger, you can see it now generates that hello print string. So when we enter this box here, instead of printing hello, we're going to switch the camera over to the shopkeeper. Okay, so we're going to get rid of the print string hello, which we don't need anymore. And we're going to right click and make sure and tick context sensitive so you can make sure it sees it. And we're going to do set view target with blend. Now the target for this, it says is a player controller. So if that goes into true like so, our target needs to be the player controller. Get player controller. And the new view target has to be a new actor. And in this case, it's itself. So from here, we're going to drag out and do a self reference. And that means it's going to change the camera from the player uh, character to this. And it will assign it to the first camera it comes across, which is the shop camera here. The blend time is how long you want it to take to blend into that mode. So if I say two for two seconds, and we've got a blend function of linear, so it'd be a steady blend. It's not going to be um, uh, exponential or anything like that. And we'll leave these two also as their default values. Hit compile, and hit play. And you can now see it's now switching to that view. So once I've done that, I want to also tell the player character to stop moving. Because if I test this out again, let's make the blend time a lot quicker. Do one second. And the player character can still move. Okay, so we need to tell the player character that they can't move anymore once we've blended into this. Okay, so to do that, we're going to set the input mode to uh, UI only. Need a player controller for this, so uh, get player controller, and we're going to leave the input the widget to focus as blank for now. Uh, we'll replace this down the line when we actually make our widget. Um, and once we've got that, we also then want to change it so we can see the mouse cursor. So from the player controller, we go set show mouse cursor, and we'll make that true we also want to make sure we wipe out the uh, the blend of the uh, so the character mesh itself as well so if you get the player controller uh, character get player character you can set the visibility or set actor hidden to be hidden again to be true as well So when we enter that box now, my character will disappear and it will transition into my shopkeeper and show the mouse cursor. So what we'll be doing in the next episode is starting setting up the shopkeeper UI interface and making a little exit button to return the gameplay back to the player character, make them visible and continue the game as such. As you can see right now, I can't move the character at all. He's locked down, he's invisible and uh, we're ready to go for the rest of the series. So thanks very much for watching. If you have any requests or specific requirements for your shopkeeper AI or shopkeeper NPCs, please let me know in the comments below. Plus, if you have any suggestions for future videos or any uh, queries or bugs or anything like that, don't forget to also leave a comment below also. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the little notify bell to be notified on new releases. If you want to see the next episode in the series right now, you can head over to patreon.com forward slash ryanlady and support me there for just a dollar to get access to that video plus many others. Big thank you to all my patrons so far and thank you to those top patrons who have donated the most money um, this month. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.